Hello and welcome to Two Blokes in a Car. Hi. It's a special edition of Three Blokes in a Pub, uh, which we do uh, now and again. No, we've never done this before. <laughs> we do this when we're pressed for time, which we are today, because it's uh, it's Friday the 22nd of March. 20- a week before we're scheduled to leave the EU. Yeah, indeed. Um, I'm here with Femi from Offock. Hi. Uh, and I'm Graham Hughes from Liverpool for Europe, I guess. <laughs> Or three blokes in a pub. Yeah. I mean, more people know me for three blokes in a pub. So, what we're going to talk about while we drive to some random town on the Durham coast? Mm-hmm. Oh dear, oh, is that a problem? No, nope, that's Beeping. good. <laughs> that just means the speed camera. Is... Okay, good, good. Don't, don't, obviously, obviously, I don't, I don't, I don't use that to avoid speed cameras. But I'll, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this podcast is going to be like a data download, and, and Femi is going to tell us exactly what options lay ahead for Parliament, and in fact for the United Kingdom when it comes to Brexit. Yeah. So um, what happens next? So uh, Theresa May has now asked for an extension because she just spent the last two years negotiating a deal that the entire country, both Leavers and Remainers, do not like, and it's been rejected massively twice. Um, And so she's asked for an extension from the EU. The EU has said you either get a short extension uh, if your deal gets approved, which is unlikely to do, or you ask for a long extension um, but a long extension would need a reason. And I think the only reason we could possibly give is for a people's vote. Okay. Um, but both main parties don't seem to want a people's vote. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn didn't even mention it as a possibility after the second decisive crushing of Theresa May's um, uh, withdrawal agreement in Parliament. So, basically... A people's vote was never going to be the MP's first choice because they all, they're all, there's, all, there's so much pressure against the people's vote from the hard, from the hard right, ERG types, from the Lexiteers. They, they, they want to make it look like the people's vote was their last option, which means that they've been systematically going through all the options, no deal, this deal, possible renegotiation. And, it, and basically they're getting to the idea is, let's get the country so close to the cliff edge that they can see over it and realize they don't actually want it. And so once we is actually that working now, that's a high risk strategy. It's a isn't high it? risk strategy, yes, and it's 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 resulting. It's pushing us very very close to that cliff edge. To the point that we might be building up so much momentum that we actually go off before we can actually turn around. But um, I believe that given that where we where we're heading, given that the the deal isn't going to be approved, given that um, the process of acting asking for an extend a longer extension is going to require a reason. And we're not going to be able to say, give us a long extension so we can approve the deal because there's no evidence that the deal's ever going to be approved. We're not going to be able to say, give us an, an, an extension because we're going to have a general election because the Tories are never going to vote for something that would can only possibly result in a Jeremy Corbyn prime minister, which is their worst nightmare. In fact, they feel that worse than anything that could possibly happen with Brexit. Hang on, but, but I mean, the, the Tories are still ahead in the polls at the moment. Mm. So wouldn't it just result in another hung par- parliament? But A, what would that achieve? If, it, if it's another, if it's it, the only pot, the only, the only logic of having a referendum is if you're aim, ha- having a general election is if your aim is to have a different government, and if you're going to have a different government, it's going to be it's going to be Corbyn. So there's no point in doing a general election from the Tories' perspective. So they're not going to vote for a general election. A general election, and you need because of the fixed term Parliament Act. Yeah. You need a majority in the House to say yeah, we want an election. Exactly. For it to happen. Oh wow! So, um, what, so you think that the, the third meaningful vote is it actually going to go ahead? Because I thought John Burke had said no. The the argument is that given that the, the EU have now said that we will grant you a short extension if this deal is approved, you could argue that this third meaningful vote is substantially different to the diff- the previous two, okay. uh, and that's and that's how it might go through. But the for me, the only way it could possibly go through is if it has Labour behind it, and Labour will only get behind it if, um, basically, you, the Kyle Wilson Amendment goes through, which means people's what's vote. That, what's that amendment? Who's putting that forward? That mean? amendment is, uh, I think, uh, from uh, MPs named Kyle and Wilson, uh, and they're um, is basically saying, we will put the deal to the people. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, Jeremy Corbyn has been a bit ambiguous as to whether or not he's going to get Labour to back it. Jeremy Corbyn? <laughs> ambiguous? ambiguous. I know. No. Perish the thoughts. He's never ambiguous. <laughs> he says what he means um, in a very forthright way. 
<laughs> well, basically, he uh, he hasn't made it entirely clear whether or not he's willing to back the amendment in his current form, whereby basically put Theresa May's deal to the people, yeah. because he's been suggesting that he'd only willing he will he'd only be willing to put a Labour Brexit to the people, which yeah. is an annoying phrase to use because there will never be a Labour Brexit. It, it just it, for a Labour Brexit to happen, it would require Labour to be at the negotiating table, and for that to happen, Labour would need to be in power, and for that to happen, there needs to be a general election. And as we just as we just discussed, the Tories are never going to vote for a general election. But isn't there another way that that could happen if they? Because you know, Jeremy Corbyn has had talks with Michel Barnier. Mm. I mean, couldn't Labour say we will support Theresa May's deal if we can all go to Brussels together and, and talk about it? But then it starts being Theresa May's deal and starts becoming Labour's deal. And if it would require Theresa May to change her red lines, and she will not. She keeps saying, we need to be out of the single market, we need to be out of the customs union, and Labour Brexit means we'd be in, we'd be being both of those. So... There so, so this this amendment next week. So we're going to have a, another a third meaningful vote next week. But the difference will be there'll be an amendment to it that says that it has to be put to the people. Yes, that's that, and, and and that's it, that's being supported by Labour. That Labour set Labour's support for that isn't clear yet. Right. Uh, Jeremy Jeremy Corbyn has said it, it's been yeah. She, he did an interview with with Sophie Ridge at the weekend that it was very unclear as to whether or not he'd be he'd be backing the, the Carol Wilson amendment. Which is unfortunate um, because we need clarity at this point. Because if if Labour support Theresa May's deal with that amendment, they'll walk it because they'll easily have enough of a majority even without the DUP or the ERG or anything else. If if, if Labour if Labour whips to support that amendment and the and 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 the, and, and then and then whips to support the deal as a whole, then it's highly likely the deal, the deal will the deal will go through. But the question is. Labour will only whip to support the deal as a whole if the amendment passes, and whether or not the amendment passes, that's the crucial issue. Whether or not there's enough support in Parliament to put an amendment through, an amendment there that would lead to a, another referendum. That's the question. So, my mathematics is, if the Labour are whipped, mm -hmm. and then you'll have people like Kate Howe, you yeah. are basically in the ERG, so they're not going to vote for it, but yeah. most MPs, most Labour MPs will vote for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, then you've got the Green, you've got the Lib Dems, the TR TIG, they're all going to vote for it. Mm -hmm. The SNP are all going to vote for it. Yep. And then we've got Tory rebels who will vote for it and be able to justify voting for it, won't they? Because they'll be able to say, well, we've voted for your deal and we, we will vote for your deal if... Subject to public subject ratification. To. But, and this is the big but, um, they know that if it goes to the people's vote, if it goes back to the people, we're going to say that we want to remain. Highly likely. Um, if if another referendum happens and it's between the deal and EU membership, I'm confident that EU membership will win just purely on the logic of the reason why people voted for Brexit was to have more control over our country. This deal means objectively less. Jacob rees Mark said this deal makes us a slave state. So if you want them to take back control, there is no chance of you voting for this deal because it means we have less control than EU members. Now, and then obviously Remainers are going to vote for Remain. What concerns me is that we might end up with a referendum between no deal and membership, which is, that's dangerous. Why would you give people that? Why I, would do, you... I don't think a responsible parliament should. Uh, par do we have a responsible parliament? Yeah, that's, that's my point. Um, our responsible parliament cannot put an option that damaging on the, on the table, and it has no obligation to. The ballot paper in 2016 said, leave the European Union. This deal, as bad as it does, means we will no longer be a member of the European Union. There are other countries outside the EU, like Norway, which are bound by the, e by the rules of the EU, but are not members of the EU. So this deal does fulfill the re referendum result. So there is no obligation to put something as reckless as no deal on the table. But if it, if it were to be put on the table, I'd be very, very worried that people might vote for it on the basis that um, on the basis that no deal isn't defined, because no deal. It, well, there's a lot of lies, isn't there? Yeah. No. What, what, what no. What no deal means. There's a lot of arguments about no deal in terms of the damage to the economy, and a lot of it gets phrased as project project fear. Now, the the one argument that I found really really cuts through is no deal means we turn ourselves into the only major economy in the world that doesn't have a trade deal with its closest neighbours. That means that 
we'd be choosing to do something that every successful economy in the world has chosen specifically not to do. We'd also have no trade deal with anyone because all of our trade deals go through the EU. Almost. Uh, we would still have our arms deals, which would turn us into a great country. Uh, we, 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 our, our economy would be largely reliant on selling weapons to Saudi Arabia, who's using them to commit, using them to commit war crimes. Yay! <laughs> oh, Brexit is like a Russian doll of shit. Isn't it? Every time yeah. you get it through another layer, there's another layer of shit, and it's yes. even stinkier than before. Okay, so um, I want to talk briefly about so so in the next couple of weeks, if we have the next week, if we have the meaningful votes mm -hmm. and uh, the third meaningful vote, and this time it goes through with the amendments, mm. then we start giving up for the referendum, and we will have a much longer extension. From um, we'll have a much longer extension, yep, won't yep, we? Yeah. Um, so, um, if this doesn't go through, we've got two weeks. Is that right? We've got till April the eleventh. They said today. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. And so, what's expected to happen in those two weeks? If it doesn't go through, then we're going to need to we're going to need to actually request a, a longer extension. Nice. Um, uh, but then, the, then it becomes well, why? because the EU is not going to give us a long extension without a proper justification. Macron has already said he's not a fan of a long extension unless we have a clear plan. Yeah. And the only clear plan is a referendum, because, like I said, you can't guarantee that Parliament is going to vote for the deal and they're going to want guarantees. You can't guarantee that a general election is going to take place because it's highly unlikely to. The only way you can guarantee a definitive answer by a definitive date is if you say we're going to put it to the people and the yeah. people's voice will carry. And that will be a legally binding referendum, so no one will be allowed mm. to cheat this time. Well, I mean, it would... The thing is, the reason why the 2016 referendum was so bad is because leave wasn't defined. Leave could have meant absolutely anything. Could range from anything from no deal, WTO, Brexit, to Norway, single market, customs union, blah, 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 blah. So, we had a 48% approval rating for our current relationship with the EU. Doesn't that's not the same as a 52% approval rating for whatever results from the negotiations. Yeah. And that's the main thing that people have been just not getting. Yeah. Just because we voted 52% voted to leave, that doesn't mean 52% be happy with whatever negotiations end up being. Now, moving forward, yeah, I think I think a referendum is, is, the, is the only way to solve this. Okay, so finally, just to wrap this up, if we do get it, and we do get the referendum, and don't forget we got 48% without even trying, with Jeremy Corbyn, uh, not Jeremy Corbyn, with, um, yeah, I don't know, um, with um, uh, David Cameron being the head of the, the, the Remain campaign, yeah, yeah. Um, can we get to a situation where we get to a referendum, and then what happens next? I mean, after that, are we in a lot of trouble, or...? As in, if we have a referendum, we vote to stay, or if we have a referendum, referendum, and we vote to stay. If we vote to leave, fine, I'll we'll yep. leave, and, and yeah, because well, I mean, well here's, here's the thing: even if we ultimately leave, yeah. our referendum is still necessary yeah. because it means that people have looked at what happened over the past two years. It means that people um, have seen exactly what deal we're getting, or yeah. if it's no deal, and there will be democratic consent for the specific Brexit that we end up getting, yeah. and that is a far more democratically stable position to be in. Because yeah. if we don't have that, then everyone will be able to say, none of us voted for this. Right. And okay. then we'll be arguing with each other for decades. Okay. Now, uh, if we do vote to stay, it could go, we, we're on a knife edge. Because as much as um, the deal would destroy the country because neither side likes it, and so we'd be um, arguing against each other for decades, and no deal would make those areas that vote for Brexit much poorer, yeah. and again, there'd be very much a lot of animosity towards those who'd be ultimately even poorer than they currently are. Yeah. If we vote to stay in the EU, and you just get a bunch of cocky Remainers going on TV saying, we won, you were wrong, you're stupid, you're racist, our way of the highway, a European army, blah, 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 the country's screwed. Okay, so, so basically, in a nutshell, if we do get the people's vote, and we do win it, mm. We've got to be extra nice, and we've got to make sure that we build a new Britain in the the vision that we have for mm. it, in which everyone gets to say yeah. and places get invested into. It's not yeah. just about yeah, it's not just about be, being extra nice. People voted for change largely yeah. because if you live in areas like Hull, you don't have the same opportunities as people born in Greater London. We have a yeah. very very unequal country. Yeah. People need to see that change. They need to see that politicians have got 
the message. Yeah. And that's why they need to see serious investment in their area, which has been lacking for a generation. So just want to talk a little bit more about what we plan to do, what we plan to do in the eventuality of a no deal Brexit, mm. a people's vote, uh, which leave win, mm. or people's vote that, that uh, remain with. Um, but if no deal happens, have you got it in you to not say to people who voted for this, this is what you voted for, you've made me poorer, you've made yourself poorer? Mm. I mean, see, the, the, the unfortunate situation is, if if we if we leave the if we if we, leave, if we don't if we don't leave the EU, I'm going to be more on arguing for levers because if we don't leave the for EU, leaving. for for levers, oh, for levers on, yeah. on their behalf, I'll be arguing on, I'll be arguing on behalf of levers, okay, uh, because I know that it is those areas that have been left behind, those areas that have been suffering, those areas that don't get investment from Westminster those areas that political class has ignored that need serious investment to improve their standard of living, to improve their transport infrastructure, yeah. to improve the, their, their, well, their quality of life. And so if, if we stay in the EU, I'll be arguing for levers. Unfortunately, if we do leave the EU, especially under a no-deal no circumstance, uh, I will have less compassion for, um, for, for, for levers if, 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 if we leave with no, if we leave with no deal. I, I don't know if I'll have any compassion at all. I mean, I'm going to be mad as hell because they'll have made it so that there are shortages of food, there are shortages of medicine, and people are going to die. There's going to be children with I mean, cancer who won't get their radioactive isotopes in time to save their lives because it's held up at the freaking border because yeah. we decided that we, we don't want any foreign stuff coming here. We want to check it all. Make sure it's not well, too foreign. I mean, the British Medical Association says that a no-deal Brexit would be catastrophic for the NHS. Now, these are organisations like the Royal College of Nurses, Royal College of Midwives. These are organisations that aren't usually political. So if the British Medical Association, the highest medical authority in the country, is choosing to get political, and not just get political, use a word like catastrophic in, in relation to Brexit, you know that we're talking about thousands of lives here. Now, if you think that the, the conversation around Brexit has been divisive and aggressive and passionate and angry up to this point, what happens when you know that your kid died because of, of, of a because Brexit? Of, of Brexit. What, how are you going to feel towards the people that made that happen? I, I, I want to kill them. Now, that's the situation that we have if, if no deal happens. Oh. And, I, and I, I just don't see us recovering from that as a country. But how, how come millions of people, like normal Britons, want that? Is it just not been explained to them well enough by, our, by the people in charge, by our politicians? Not... They, I mean, you've had about two years of no deals better than a bad deal from, 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 from the Prime Minister. Um, and people are talking up no deal and it's not smacked down as ludicrous. Um, and the thing is, it's, this, it's the same problem that we had during the referendum, the same reason why I got involved. It's because nobody, they just say, well, this expert says this, this expert says this. And because we already have a crisis of faith and expertise, in order to believe that, you have to trust in that expert. And people just generally don't, which is really, which is a problem we need to sort out. But what we need to do now is we need to explain things step by step so people can actually see why is this expert saying this. So for example, with no deal, right now, it makes sense to, to build factories in the UK for the purposes of supplying goods and services to the entire continents of Europe. So if you're a business that wants to sell stuff to all of Europe, you can build in the UK because we're in the same market. But if there is a, um, a tariff barrier or a difference in laws and regulations between us and where most of your stuff is going because you're gonna supply the whole of Europe, we stop being a logical place to, to build stuff, to sell stuff, to make stuff, to employ people. So that is the sort of thing that happens if we have no deal because we then separate ourselves from the from our biggest and closest markets. And regarding the, the NHS, why is the British Medical Association sticking its neck out? Because right now, a lot of our drugs come from the rest of Europe. The Euratom program, an EU program, is how you, is, the, is a system which allows radioactive materials to be transported from country to country. country. 
Now, if you need radioactive isotopes for your cancer treatments, and we leave the Uratom program, we're gonna see shortage of cancer treatments. Boom, anyone can understand that. We know that it's not Project Fear. We also know that citizens from EU countries make up 5% of the population and 10% of our doctors. Now, if you have an entire narrative around a country um, where a massive political shift happens because fueled by a, an extremely anti-migrant um, rhetoric, then how? If you imagine if you were if you were um, born in in Germany, raised in Germany, met, got your medical degree in Germany, and then Britain is the only country in the EU that is massively anti-immigration from the narrative you see on, on, on TV. You're seeing a massive rise in, in, in hate crimes. You know that every other EU country will treat you equally as a citizen because you'll be treated, because, well, EU citizens have a, have a, have a, have a special status. Why would you come here? And well, when you say, uh, you know, everyone knows that 5% of, um, of the population of the EU, they make up 10% of doctors, not everybody knows that. Not everybody does. Uh, and the, the, actually, very few people know that. Yep. And these are the messages that are not getting out there. And one of the things that is a source of eternal frustration for me, and I know a lot of leave, uh, a lot of Remainers will be watching this, is the fact that the Leavers are allowed to go on TV and spout unchallenged nonsense. What can we do about that? You need people fact checking constantly. It, oh. just, it just it just needs to happen. It, there, there's no there's no. I mean, I do my best. I call out on Twitter. And I, and I reach out whoever I can reach, but it needs to happen on TV because not everybody who uh, voted leave, uh, well, not everybody who votes watch is on Twitter. In fact, I think statistically they're more likely to be on Facebook. Which is on, which? Yeah. So but that, I, I did a I did a debate the other day, and the guy I was against, he just it, it, it was hard to let him finish because he had, say, a minute to speak, and he managed to get 15 lies into that minute. Yeah. 15 absolute 100% porcupine lies. Yeah, you, you saw the same thing on, on Question Time last night. You had um, this guy talking about how the EU's never had its account signed off. Are they saying that still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, he, and he said that at the start of, of, his, um, of, his, of his little one minute speech, and because he said it at the start, he got onto a whole bunch of other stuff by the time Fiona Bruce actually answered him, and I had to go at Fiona Bruce because she should have called it out. But yeah. if there's so much, if there's yeah. so much that's wrong, so much bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just just for the record, um, the EU there were uh, up until 2007 there were errors every year, but they got corrected afterwards. So they, it's not correct to say that the accounts weren't signed off. It's correct to say that there were errors, and then they corrected them afterwards because they figured out what went wrong. And then, that, and then since 2007, they've now corrected the system, which means that they don't have those same errors. And so the problem has been resolved, but yeah. yet that lie is still being pumped out well, and not we, challenged. Can't we have a new, a new system in which if you go on TV, mm. as soon as you come out with a lie, the interview is terminated. The first lie, the first thing that you say that is demonstrably untrue. And it's easy to check this stuff now. It's not like you have to go down to the library. Mm and get yourself a library book and look up, you know? <laughs> you just get on Google and go, is this real? And you can check it. And mm. you can have people whose job it is mm. at ITN, or BBC, Channel 4 News or whatever, when they have these people on. And so the yeah, presenter can say, I'm sorry, I've got to stop this interview now because you are telling lies. Mm. That, that, can that, we, can that, we have that, please? <laughs> that would certainly be a very hard line way of doing it. I personally, yeah. would, I pers <laughs> I personally would want... Yeah. I would want just a bit, a bit of uh, real-time fact-checking so that people know, all right, that was a lie. And, and, unless, and unless they admit that, that they're fault, then they can stop the interview. Okay. So what if, what if we get the people's vote mm. through this referendum next... Well, through this vote next week, we get the referendum and, um, and we lose it. I mean, what's, what's your plans then? Well, I mean, that puts us in a better position um, democratically because then it means at least we'll have democratic consent for the version of Brexit that we actually end up with. Um, and so, but if, but if we do leave on, on, on certain terms, if we leave on the deal terms, uh, we, yeah, if it's, a, if it's a referendum between deal and remaining in the EU and deal wins and we leave on those terms, uh, to a certain extent, um, it's better than if we just leave with the deal terms now because then at least you'll be able to say well um, Everyone on the leave side will be able to say oh we voted for this. This is this is our will 
Um, and then if they complain that we end up less sovereign, then we can just say, well, you literally voted. The deal was there, yeah. it was published. You have yeah. Jacob rees Mogg saying for months that this deal would make us a slave state. You cannot complain. Jacob rees Mogg, who's, who might actually vote for Theresa May's deal. Uh, don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So, I mean, to be honest with you, Theresa May's deal um, is awful and it does make us a vassal state, mm. but I'd rather have that than, than no, no deal. deal. Just because no deal is absolutely catastrophic. Yeah. And also, you know, it's a deal where nobody gets what they want. Mm. The, not the Remainers, not the Leavers. And we would be a vassal state of the EU. We would be. And we say, well, people voted to do that. So there you go. Happy days. Yeah. I mean, I. <sighs> Part of me wonders which is worse, no deal or or the or the or the, or the deal. I think I've got to say that no deal is worse, purely because, given that both would do irreparable damage to the fabric of our society in terms of you'd end up with long term neither side being happy with what we get and blaming yeah. the other side. So that happens in, in both versions of, of Brexit. At least with the deal, the economy is slightly more protected than no deal. Yeah. Um, and so you wouldn't see you wouldn't see those areas that voted for Brexit being massively destroyed by, by it. You'd yeah. see them suffering more, but it wouldn't be um, catastrophic. Would you, would you therefore respect the referendum, the second referendum result, whatever it will be? One hundred percent. I mean, the if we if we if we if we, if we, if we, if we, if we yeah. If, if, if we if we vote to leave the EU on specific terms, then that is that is informed consent. What we signed in 2016 was a blank check. In 2016, Brexit was four words: leave the European Union. Right now, it's a 585-page treaty, which most Brexit voters do not like. It is it is a democratic necessity that people get a say on it. Yeah, it is. And so, yeah, when people go, oh, but then you want another referendum. You want another referendum. Like, on what? No, we, there's nothing else to decide. We want a final say on the deal, which is even what Jacob Rees-Mogg suggested <laughs> yeah. back in 2012. Yeah. He said it in Parliament. He said, maybe there should be a second referendum <laughs> to, to do the terms of the, <laughs> of the leaving. You know, I mean, it's like... You said it, dude. Just yeah. <laughs> let's let's do that thing that you said would be a good idea a few years ago. Exactly. But they know that they'll lose, and this is it. This is the big thing. Mm. They know that if they put it to the people, the people want to remain, mm. and I, they're still using the term "will of the people" mm. when they know it. That's so duplicitous to use that term because yep. they know it's they know it's bull. This is not true. Anyway, it looks like we're here mm -hmm. at Easington Colony. Yes. Uh, so we're on the, the, the lovely Durham coast at the moment. Uh, we're looking for, what are we looking for? Uh, I think we'll just park up and then... Um, we'll just have a little walk around. Yeah. We're going to have a chat to some people who live here. Mm. Ask them why they voted to leave. Mm. So we're a bit mad like that. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. For uh, joining, uh, jo well, giving me a lift in your car. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to go to a pub and do this, but uh, time, time is ticking on. Uh, trying to do a manoeuvre now. And yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah trying to, I'm trying to I'm trying to get it, I'm trying to get us all killed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! Right, so um, yeah, so whatever happens next in Brexit, we'll be, still be making these videos. We'll still be out there protesting, trying to either get people to get us behind us, people's votes or get behind revoking Article 50, which now has over three million signatories to the uh, to the. Uh, petition to sack off uh, Article 50, what, do, you, do you think that will have any effect at all? Or? Regarding the idea of simply revoking Article 50 without having a referendum, uh, for me, the petition only shows just how, how necessary a referendum is. Yeah. Simply revoking Article 50 is not an option that I uh, support purely because it doesn't fix the conversation in the country. Did you vote? Did you did you sign the, the petition? I didn't. Oh, I, didn't. I shared it, but didn't. Yeah. But didn't. Didn't sign well, I've, I've supported it just because we're panicking now and it mm. needs to be done. Mm. Uh, if that's the only way out, then show us some support for it. Mm. But me myself, I would prefer a people's vote. Yeah, it's the, the final it's, say. It's, it's the democratic way forward. It is right. We're here. Excellent. Right. Femi, thank you very much. Thank Shake you. Very your much. Hand. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's go and uh, annoy some levers. Indeed. <laughs>